Let's break it down. So when the ball was passed back to Matthew Ryan, you can see how Argentina are marking 8 out of 10 passing opportunities. Looking at it from Ryan's perspective, the red areas are the most dangerous, the orange ones are the normal 50-50 chance that the keeper would take when clearing the ball out, waiting to win an aerial duel. Hello there everyone, it is Mitsuhiro and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I'll analyze the match between Argentina and Australia. Argentina started the game with their usual 4-3-3 formation and applied high pressure right after the kickoff. Julian Alvarez was playing on the right, Alejandro Gomez on the left and Messi was playing as a center forward. On the other hand, Australia used a 4-4-2 formation. At the beginning of the match, they were keeping a medium and sometimes a high defensive line as you can see. This 4-4-2 would transform into a 4-2-4 formation as the team starts applying high pressure. You can see how the three midfielders from Argentina are closely marked by Australia when applying this 4-2-4 shape. Australia would get into the full high pressure shape very slowly as the team forces Argentina backwards first and then starts marking the possible passing options. However, I must say that Australia were not taking any benefit of this high pressure. Argentina's high pressure was more effective. The team was able to transform into this full high pressure shape very quickly compared to Australia. Something that forced Australia to either clear the ball away or play missed passes whenever they try to carry the ball out on the ground. You can see how Argentina pushed numbers high up the pitch whenever Matthew Ryan had the possession of the ball. Australia were keeping this very compact medium defensive block for plenty of minutes in the first half. Argentina did not have any wingers in the starting 11. You can clearly observe one reason behind Argentina's lack of threat in the first half. The team also did not depend on the switches that we saw in their last game against Poland. To build the attacks on the ground, Rodrigo de Paul usually dropped down to connect with Enzo Martinez outside the defensive block. Messi also dropped down multiple times to receive the ball from the back line. You can notice how Australia's block is moving forward during the process. Just like the previous game against Poland, Enzo Fernandez was playing as a single pivot, dropping down between the two center backs to receive the ball while building up. Lionel Scaloni asked Julian Alvarez to perform these forward runs behind the back line. We saw Argentina trying to connect these passes more than once, but the end product was not as expected. You can see here that Julian Alvarez was offside before the ball was played. Argentina applied this play, but it was not the main tactic of Lionel Scaloni throughout the first half obviously. However, the long balls were the main tactic of Australia. It just felt like the team did not want to take any risks with the ball on the ground in the midfield. So whenever they had the possession of the ball, they would directly look to play these long balls on the flanks. Therefore, the forwards would instantly be positioned between the midfield and defensive lines of Argentina. Aaron Moy was playing as a single pivot in the first half and he was responsible to connect these passes. Notice that even when having three free players in the midfield, Aaron still decided to go for the switch towards the right hand side. Messi performed a couple of switches that we saw in the last game against Poland with Acuna, but this game Alejandro Gomez was occupying the left wing position and received these switches. Argentina did not really find a way to break through the defensive block of Australia though, which was a problem. Lionel Scaloni asked Alejandro Gomez to play on the right side. Enzo Fernandez was now building the attacks from high up the pitch, but I still believe that the main issue here was the lack of wingers. Alejandro Gomez and McAllister are kind of similar players on the pitch, so both of them did not really work together, unlike how McAllister played extremely well in the last game against Poland for example, when Di Maria was playing. The first goal was scored after a set piece was cleared back towards Messi. Alejandro Gomez performed an overlap to grab some attention, but apparently all the defenders remained with Messi. So he passed the ball outside the box as he moved towards the goal. The Australian defenders showed very poor defensive awareness as they kept their eyes on the ball and not the players here. So McAllister then played the short pass inside the box to Romero who set the ball up to Messi. You can see how Messi is completely unmarked inside the box, although Australia are obviously outnumbering Argentina. Australia tried to react quickly to the goal by applying high pressure, but again this high pressure was not effective due to the poor positioning of the players in the midfield. This video is brought to you by Play by Metrica Sports, the fundamental tool for every coach and analyst. Create and manage all your video analysis in one platform. Use the coupon MitsuJR at the checkout for a 10% discount. Moving to the second half, Graham Arnold lowered his defensive block. Both teams continued the match with very similar tactics to the first half. 
Australia applied high pressure for some minutes, as the team tried to score the equalizer, but again you can clearly see that this pressure is not anywhere near complete or serious, so Argentina were able to find their way out. We also saw similar marking issues in the second half. Now we cannot always say it is a mistake when marking Messi with 4 players, but obviously this creates an imbalance in the back line. On the other hand, Lionel Scaloni continued applying the high pressure. Notice this 4 vs 5 situation in Australia's half. And that's exactly how Argentina scored the second goal. Let's break it down. So when the ball was passed back to Matthew Ryan, you can see how Argentina are marking 8 out of 10 passing opportunities. Looking at it from Ryan's perspective, the red areas are the most dangerous, the orange ones are the normal 50-50 chance that the keeper would take when clearing the ball out, waiting to win an aerial duel. And finally, the green circles are the safe options. You can see here that Australia's orientation was not bad actually, as two players are positioned on the flanks, which provides a good chance of building the attacks and countering the high pressure. Now, as he receives the ball, he is not considered very close to the opposition, and as far as the passing options are concerned, nothing has changed. But for some reason, he decided to dribble through the two players, and failed. As a reaction, Australia started applying high pressure again. But again, I just do not understand why Graham Arnold did not try to fix the issues in the midfield for the entire 90 minutes. Yes, he fixed one as the team started playing with a double pivot in the second half, but the midfield issue was way bigger than that. Leo Messi did a great job after the goal by connecting with different teammates around the pitch. He allowed Argentina to play a lot, and I mean a lot of linker plays on different areas on the pitch. He even provided two key passes to Lautaro Martinez towards the end of the game but Lautaro was not able to convert the chances. We saw the 4-2-4 shape again from Australia towards the end of the game. I believe the main issue in the second half was the lack of stamina. You know, applying this amount of high pressure and then ending up with no results whatsoever can easily turn against you. The team completely lowered the pressure applied and we saw this 4-4-2 shape attempting to force any sort of mistakes from Argentina's back line. Australia's only goal was scored after a cross inside the box. However, this cross did not connect, it was cleared badly towards the outside of the box and the shot was not even on target but it got deflected. To secure the result, Lionel Scaloni used a backline of 5 players with this 5-3-2 formation for the last 10 minutes of the game. Before I end the video, I would like to let you know that the Econo Coaches Academy started publishing in-depth analysis of the World Cup teams. So if you would like to know more about these tactics, you can use the code MITSUGR after signing up from the link in the description. So that was it guys, I hope you have enjoyed the analysis. Who do you think will win between Netherlands and Argentina in the next round? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.